Welcome back. I'm building an animatronic version of a Lola droid. I've already made a couple of static versions of this droid, but this one I would like to make move. Let's get started. I received this 3D model of this droid from Droid Division on Etsy. David, quite impressively, has accurately modeled many droids from the Star Wars universe. It is his design I am modifying. If you would like to make your own Lola, I highly recommend his model as your starting point. For my design, I made a servo core and moved the droid around it. To start, I hollowed out all of the main body parts. Here you can see how much I ended up removing from the original model. Because of the small size of the droid, I had to make a wood shim between the upper saucer and the lower saucer. I drilled holes through the lower saucer and the main center component this will allow me to bolt the two halves together. Used CA glue to bond the resin together as well as glue the wood to the resin. You will notice I glued one section of wood to the lower saucer and one to the upper saucer. I wanted to make sure both sections were well attached. I used epoxy putty on the upper saucer to reinforce the wood. I modified the legs as well. One leg was hollowed out so that I could run a wire up into the droid from a stand that held the battery. I modified the hip area to use an aluminum tube. This allows the legs to have more strength and allows me to use a set screw to keep the droid standing in the right position. Initially, the hip was separate from the lower saucer cutout. I quickly realized that I just need to make the hip and the cutout one part. I bolted the servo horn to the cutout and left a hole from underneath so I could attach the set screw to the servo. It did require things to go together in a certain order. The servo core went through about seven iterations before I landed on the one that has two servos and the control board mounted in the middle. One servo will move the droid to look right and left, and the other controls the tilt up and down. For the wings, I'm using a small hinge. Placement is critical to get the wing to open properly. This required more of the model to be removed. There is a slot in the wing that has to be flattened, and a section inside the upper saucer that needs to be dremeled out. Everything is hot glued into place. The wing and the servo are temporarily attached, this is what I shot as a proof of concept. I wanted to make sure I could get everything to work before I fully committed to the build. So let's talk about everything that we've been doing here. So, so we have the servo here, has an easy connector. And there is a shaft here connected to a ball joint everything's primed connected to a ball joint and that slips right into the easy connector and that allows the whole operation to tilt you have this servo here which is connected to the legs which allows the whole operation to turn left and right let me see that inside the For the wings, we have two servos that simply lift up right here and cause the wings to lift. And it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And now we're almost ready to paint. Well, we are ready to paint. Uh, the problem is, is that I made this piece to fit a receiver like that and everything plugs in right there or vice versa plug on the side as well but I'm not going to use a remote control with this character I am going to use the maestro and the maestro doesn't fit no matter how I do it there's no no way to fit that inside of there and actually this is not even the one I'm going to be using the one I'm going to be using 
is this one. So this little teeny tiny maestro, but it too is not going to fit well into my little opening. So we have to change out this piece. And I'm actually already made it. So I'm going to switch it out. This one's made, printed in ABS. This one was done in resin. Um, this one actually broke this, you know, it's been, been using it for the prototyping process. But right now I'm going to switch out all of this stuff into this servo holder. Okay, now we have the Maestro reattached. It's attached to the eighth iteration of the servo core, and it fits there really nicely. There's plenty of room now in the inside of the body of the droid. The power wire is now run up the leg and into the Maestro. Here is the lower section of the saucer. This part has not changed. The upper saucer, however, got a bit of an update. I created a small part to hold each servo. This allowed me to attach them with screws. In addition, I used screws to attach the hinges to the wing and to the saucer. Now, onto the paint. The lower saucer and legs are a gunmetal color. I used an airbrush with Vallejo metallic paint for the airbrush. The antenna and lens parts are also the same gunmetal color. To hide the white plastic of the servo core, I used a matte black acrylic paint. Weathering is done with a wash of black enamel and mineral spirits. Sprayed the upper saucer with Montana 94 in Malta White, which is much more off-white than it shows on camera. Mask the white for the next color. This Lola droid will not be the same color scheme as the one on the show. The paint I chose is Montana Black, and the color is mist. Something satisfying about watching tape be peeled off. With the initial colors on, I used the same gunmetal paint on all the inner areas. I'm using a flat aluminum acrylic paint to create an illusion of scratches and chipped paint. My second weathering color is rust. Then a wash of black enamel paint. With the painting done, time to wire this thing up. Added connectors to the power wires running from the droid, as well as inside the box. Added a servo connector to the LED to plug into the Maestro. There is one long screw that connects the upper saucer to the servo core. It acts as the pivot for the tilt. As you can see, it is a tight fit inside this droid. Programming the Maestro requires the board to be plugged into the computer. So I did all of the programming with the lower saucer removed. The programming software is very easy to use. And if you are interested, check out Lolu's website for more information. The lower saucer slides over the feet and four screws attach it to the upper saucer. I decided to add sound to the droid. I ended up removing the soundboard from a Lola toy and connecting it to the Maestro. The sound system, batteries, and second Maestro are mounted into a box. I will show how I made this box in another video. The box has an access panel in the back. The droid's feet posts slip into the pre-drilled holes and a clamp secures the droid to the box and the power cord from the droid connects to the wire inside the box. 
The last thing to do is install the eye parts and lenses. I use butyl tape for the main eye and lens because if I need to take the droid apart, then I will need to access the tilt set screw. The small lens is glued in. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.